Hello and welcome to the next video of my World's 2024 series where we are going over the games that took place today in Play-Ins Day 3 uh, at the event. Um, series here, clearly Mad Lions Koi 2-1, GAM Esports 2-0, those are the two winners, uh, and then preview tomorrow's pair of series. On the Discord, I put up a poll if you'd like to participate, it's going to be in relation to the content on Sunday. Um, due to my work schedule, the recaps for Sunday's games will probably go out Monday and I'll have pre-recorded content um, for Sunday. Um, and it's in regards to what three champions you believe will define Worlds 2024. I just simply put up the top 20 champions in presence thus far and, uh, you know, choose the three that you believe will define Worlds and uh, I, I will go from there. Now, these series... I had PSG winning 2-1. It was a sloppy series out of PSG. Uh, Junjia looked like crap. Maple over-aggressive, over-extending on the LeBlanc, for example. That game, I mean, he was in a decent position and, and threw it all away. Um, you know, the fact that <laughs> Mad Lions were able to win with, like, Renekton in mid is, is pretty insane. Um, probably one of the most disgusting picks I can think of in... Um, in pro play is watching like a Renekton mid. I'm just, I'm, I've never been a big melee mid guy and Renekton is already pretty tough up in top lane. So to see him in mid lane, even for Frescawi was ugly. Uh, Mirwin then got it in game two and, and, and struggled um, as uh, Junjia did decent in that one and, and Maple and, and Betty as well. But Maple just even in that game, just it was ugly. It was an ugly performance. Now, Supa was definitely MVP. I mean, the amount of damage the guy is dealing is is very, very high. Probably still averaging over 1,000 after this one. Uh, we've seen it all the way back to even his profile when I previewed the team and I said the team was going to stink. Um, he had high DPM numbers. Those were undeniable. His ROI was great. So, for that to continue, I mean, he's a very aggressive player and finds a way to deal damage, and that's a big Big portion of what you need out of your 80 carry. Going 23, 6, and 11, 46% of damage. Uh, El Yoya, 4, 5, 28 in the jungle. Uh, Ozzy, 8, 6, 20, 28% of damage in top lane. A lot of that coming on the Corky in game three. Um, that was kind of a bright spot for them for a little while, but as the game went along, they kind of threw it away. They were in a good position. I felt like they were in a decent, decent spot to win that, but but they threw it away. One team fight is all it took, and uh, they lost off of that team fight. It just kind of just went from there. And it's unfortunate because, you know, I have PSG in high regard. I've been singing their praises, and they've looked terrible. And sometimes, excuse me, the reality is it's who's the best on the patch, who's the best on the day. Um, not to say PSG aren't worse than mad, because clearly they were worse today. Um but, you know, it is a matter of who are, who are the better team on the patch. And Matt are able to flex things around and get more creative than PSG can. And you even heard the coaching staff say that in an interview. And, you know, I, I always say you need to have some sort of surprise factor if you are a Western team against Eastern teams. And PSG, although being an Eastern team, is a minor region team. Um, that is as competitive. Don't That doesn't mean that they're not competitive because... I mean, there are people that thought they'd go to quarterfinals, and I thought they would be at least, you know, in contention for the eighth spot in this event. Um, you know, Mad offer things that other teams don't. Mirwin in top lane offers a lot that most top laners of this event will not. And sure, we did have a disagreement today on the Discord about whether Mirwin has value as your prototypical weak side facilitator top laner he doesn't and as a rookie he came in as more of a carry oriented top and the meta has suited him to some degree for that now you know his development needs to begin to include the orns the quesantes etc to further fill out his pool and take him to what we would consider to be a non-meta dependent top laner but he's doing his job and doing it at a high level um, hell, he picked Aurora today in Game 3, and although it wasn't great in the beginning, and you could argue it didn't really matter that much in the end, that is what Mirwin's going to pick. Um, El Yoya outplayed Junjia. Like I said, Junjia looked like... like. So, I don't remember 
I know I had him upper half for sure in my um in my rankings for sure. Maybe even higher than that. Um but there were I know some people that had him as high as like fifth going into this event and he he's really struggled. Now this does not mean that he's a bad player. We've seen him. MSI twenty twenty four, Worlds last year, MSI the year prior. It's he's he's a solid player. He's very good. He should be in a major region, and today doesn't change that. Maple struggling. I mean, that's a shock to me. Um, you know, of all the players in this event to not succumb to the pressure, I assumed Maple would be the one that would be sturdy and and, and do a good job. But it just seems like it got to him. And uh, I mean, Betty playing KDA, but you know, you look at the KDAs of PSG, and that kind of was the thing going into this event. If you if you really watch that video and you look at the stats, they weren't a team that died a lot. And so Betty playing more KDA is a thing. Um, Woody, you could see him and in, in moments actually doing what we expected in terms of uh, kill participation, roaming around the rift, trying to get his team ahead. Um, but in the end, I mean, Mad, we're able to... One thing about Mad, I will say, Alvaro in particular really inted quite a bit, especially in the Alistar game, in my opinion. Um, you know, getting caught out quite a lot. Um, but he's a rookie and that's going to happen. Uh, at these events gam esports rainbow seven this is the grudge match after this team these two faced each other twice last year gam would win soundly 2-0 um kiea 7-2-9 29 of damage in top lane emo 814 in mid lane uh kana or Ki they're saying kana i mean it just doesn't make sense i think they even pronounce it something different like kiani Ki or something like Maybe a, it's just the way that his name's being pronounced differently every day. It's making it tough. Five six five thirty four percent of damage in the loss. So clearly, Gam, we're gonna say we're picking Rumble, and they did in both games in top lane for Kia and said, "Hey, this is what's gonna happen here. We're gonna win through top. We're gonna ensure Summit gets behind, and he did. And that was kind of it. And in game two, you know, I was." watching the draft and then I had to do a couple things and then come back and all of a sudden I see that the Jace was not for Summit and it ended up being for Kiani in mid lane and it was just like one of those things of what, why did we, why are we doing that? I mean, talk about a really puzzling decision. So Rainbow 7, through, we saw their stats profile, we saw what got them here and it was a high damage output from the top side of the rift the top side of the rift was carrying the bot side was more of a of a weak side bot and mid lane just kind of filled in the gaps there but nar i know it's summit's best favorite pick but really you look at the win rate it isn't crazy it's like 53 percent. and then you look at the jace and you're like okay well at least you're giving him a carry oriented pick and then they don't do it and it was like what are well I understand you're trying to flex things and this and that, but you are not that flexible. Like, you can't put Summit on Kaysante. Like, that, this is just a waste. That is a waste. Adi should be on a facilitator. You should put um, Lions on a big-time facilitator or, or find an AD carry that has some um, utility. Why the hell are we putting Summit on Kaysante? I don't know. I understand Kaysante is a strong pick for somebody that needs a strong pick like that, but it's a strong pick like that, right, in that box. So, Gam, putting Summit behind, I mean, or at least going even with Summit was huge. Uh, Levi on the Shivana, once again, showing that that's going to be a fun pick for them at this event that has to be respected. And then Levi is also very competent on many other champions, as Wukong, for example, is something that everybody will be put on notice about. Mid lane emo not dying, right? Only dying one time. And we said this going into the event. The stats screamed it. This guy may be losing lane, but he's doing his job in terms of playing safe and smart League of Legends. At his age, with his mechanics, he's only going to get better. And this is the sort of, you know, play that he needs to do to allow the players around him to take over. Easy Love and Elio did fine into CEO Lions. Definitely still the weakest part of this team are the carry roles in mid and 80 carry, but... They're doing their job, and they're doing it at a high level. And Rainbow 7, I mean, game one, they were competitive. But game two, I mean, once you draft Kaysante top for Summit, I mean, it's over. It's over at that point. Um, 
Mid is not going to carry that game on Jace, in my opinion. This is not going to happen, um, and it's it's over after that. Preview for tomorrow, so uh, not a lot here because Viking Esports and Pain Gaming have never played against each other before. Um, these players have never crossed paths before. Uh, Viking Esports topside, their debuts, uh, Dinkito, sorry, Jin Kato and uh, Kadi never played against each other before. Uh, Shogun and Cheetan never played against each other before. So we look back at last year at Worlds. Excuse me, CB Lull and Vietnam went two and two against each other. Keep in mind that was against the Vietnamese first seed, not the second seed. So it will be interesting. Uh, Wiser looked very good, in my opinion, in Pain Gaming's first series against PSG. So um, against Nanu, I think he has a, a ton of potential to take over that top side of the rift. Um, because, like I said, Vikings' top side is definitely the weakest in the tournament. It's not particularly close. Kuroka in, in um, the jungle, I don't know if he's going to really take over quite as much. But I believe top lane certainly can. Uh, mid lane should be an interesting competitive matchup. Uh, and bot lane will definitely be an aggressive matchup between Cheetan and Shogun. Because we saw Cheetan and, and uh, was it Kura or... I guess Kur uh, was the way they were pronouncing it. I'm not sure. Curry. Um, they were aggressive. And, and they got after Betty and Woody at times. So we'll see if they can do it again against Shogun and BA. A pair that I think are very good. Um, and hopefully Vikings figure out whatever the hell they were doing in their first series and, and right the ship. Um, second series, SoftBank Hawks Gaming and 100 Thieves. So Japan versus NA. These players have not crossed paths either as River is the only player on 100 Thieves to have international experience. And Forest has never been to an event before either. So um, River and Forest do not match up. So they've never played against each other. Um, in terms of series since 2017, and by the way, this I believe is since 2018. This is since 2017. Um, North America are 4-2 and two against Japan in play-ins. The bulk of that being between C9 and DFM. I think five of the six games are. Um, and then there's the one game in 2022 where DFM did beat EG. Uh, this matchup, Evie, in, that, in those games for DFM, um, playing into Sniper, that'll be something. Because Evy could coin flip heads in that one and win that matchup, certainly. But he also could flip tails and Sniper can beat him. So that'll be a thing to watch. I think River, that is who needs to take over. Quid in his first series. I think Quid just needs a moment to kind of take a deep breath and play a solid standard series of League of Legends. I would say a lot like Emo did today. Do not over extend do not try and carry allow river to carry this and get you past this series into the final series to, to try and get into uh plans i think that that is something that they really need to do um to allow quid an opportunity um to, to to be better for the rest of this tournament after tomorrow if they can win bot lane i think that matchup is pretty close uh marble and vista are not gonna you know ruin anyone's day and then tomo and isla might just ruin their own team's day so it's one of those things of um whoever doesn't hit their face off has a good chance of winning um and river just kind of needs to be given the keys to the key to the uh, truck if you will and just to drive the 100 thieves to the next series so that's it for this uh, video thank you for watching if you like the video like it subscribe to the channel for daily league of legends content follow me on twitter join the discord become a youtube supporter and hope to see you again tomorrow